Welcome to Fairfield meeting uh, on this sort of cloudy but nice September morning. Um, our, we will begin with a, uh, a song, a worship song, a, in our worship and song book, 271. Um, I don't know if we're going to sing an acapella or if we're going to run a piano player up there, but the song is an old shaker hymn, Simple Gifts, 271. Hill. And I've never been there. Has anybody been to Pleasant Hill in Kentucky where the Shakers were? We'll have to get a report someday. I'd like to go. Looks like a nice thing. I love the Shaker music. So did Aaron Copeland. I have some centering thought and a small reflection, but before I do that, we have a speaker today who enjoys humor. And he encourages it. I'm not the speaker. It's this uh, tall Lutheran behind me. And this is from a book by uh, 
my favorite, one of my favorite people, Garrison Keeler. I just ordered it last week because I like Garrison Keeler. It's a little short joke. It said, what do you get when you cross a Lutheran and a Buddhist? You know? <laughs> it's someone who sits up all night worrying about nothing. <laughs> The centering thought is actually from a, a little short poem about September. September Skies is the title. As the sun's journey from horizon to horizon quickens and the days shorten, September skies host shifting swirls of starlings, leaderless, leaderless sways of syncopation. A recruiting, whirling dance, enticing their winged brethren to join. A brethren, a prelude frolic for their annual autumn migratory journey. Humankind pronounced their scruffy appearance unappealing, but oh, what miraculous, splendid packages they are. Garbed with feathers that endure until the next annual mold, with instincts guiding them on their imprinted venture to habitats and feeding fields more promising than those that they depart. Genes of countless preceding generations their guide. Even, evening roostings resting raucously in suburban trees, gatherings at first light evenly spaced on power lines. I wish I could understand their friendly, excited chatterings. Perhaps they would bid me, by starling example, to adapt and exist peacefully together, living free and joyfully, and doing no harm. We now uh, have an opportunity to share our joys and concerns, but it, usually we have announcements before that, and I don't see that in the book and in the, in the program here. So let's start with some announcements if we have some, and we'll start with Zoom. We have any announcements from our Zoom friends? I see Teresa, I think, waving a hand. Yes, I would like to announce that I have hung the, the schedule. It's on the wall, and I'll be sending out emails this week. Uh, if anybody wants to donate a meal, or if you get together with someone else and two different people donate a meal, I have the calendar shows the days that are still open. We've got somebody on Tuesday and Thursday already, and I'm going to pick whichever day is left because I can do any of them. But uh, appreciate everybody who always chips in on these family promise uh, pledge weeks, and that is the last week of September. Thank you, Teresa. That's coming right up. Appreciate it. Any other announcements from Zoom? How about any announcements from our meeting room? Okay, sounds like it is now. All right, Anita Kamek, a um, couple of announcements. The first one is that, just a reminder that Meeting for Business will be here today um, at the Rise of Service, but at 12.30, everybody has a chance to have a snack. Hopefully you brought a snack, I know I did. Um, so we'll start at 12.30. I'm gonna go ahead and um, make my plea for when we do have the meeting. Um, since we've been on Zoom, I really rely heavily on the recording of Zoom to do minutes and get it all right. So I'm going to make my plea to everyone to please, um, I think we're going to use a microphone if you speak, so please do that so we can get it recorded so I can get the tone and character of the minutes correct. Um, the other thing, Bill Smith asked uh, if I would um, make an announcement for him in his stead. Um, let's see, oh, so in the um, terraced area, Bill planted just, I think, within the last week or week and a half, Bill planted four new, they're called New Jersey um, tea, tr 
think they're actually called trees, but they're really shrubs. Um, and so we need to water those several times a week. Bill's around to water some. I can water when I'm here. Um, and then I think uh, Becky McClung uh, is watering some, but if anybody has any ability to water a couple of times, um, please let Bill Smith know. Um, hmm, what's his email? I'll look up his email. Um, or you can let me know as well. We need to be sure we get those watered well so that they get a good start in life this fall. And then also, um, there's a cleanup day scheduled for Saturday, November 11th, um, and that will be 8 to noonish, you know, 8 until, um, or, or before if we get stuff done. The focus of that is going to be um, trimming the shrubs back here that get really crazy, and then also working on cleaning up around the white meeting house. It's looking a little sketchy, so um, we need to do a cleanup there. And that's all. Thank you. Hi, uh, Jeff Gabbard. Just a reminder, our fall hike is coming up in two or three weeks, October 7th. Uh, we'll be going to the Lick Creek Little Africa Settlement in Orange County. There are sign-up sheets on the table as well as on the bulletin board, and there is an article on the bulletin board that Linda Mann provided that tells you a little bit about the area. Um, uh, we'll be having lunch at Phil and Joanne's farmhouse and doing a little hike there, and should be really great. So if you uh, are interested in attending, please let me know or sign up on the sign-up sheet. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Uh, a week from tomorrow, which would be September 25th, I think, uh, is our kickoff meeting for our new year for USFW. So if any women want to join us at 11 o'clock, we'd love to have you. Uh, we will have some refreshments. And actually, I think we're going to have really good refreshments from Sue. She's <laughs> She uh, has already given us our menu. So we would love to have you at 11 o'clock, and that will start off our year. Thanks. Oh, and I'm Sarah Luckabill. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. To, um, my name is Josiah Hostetler. Uh, I'm, uh, as a part of uh, Interfaith Alliance for Mental Wellness, um, we'll be hosting the uh, Franciscan uh, mental health providers at the JCC uh, Indy uh, campus on Friday, September 22nd from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. on a mental health first aid for youth in crisis. So any parents or um, any people that uh, work with youth, if you're interested in that, um, there'll be CUs for social workers, too, if you're interested. So I have the flyer here. Alma Pierce. Uh, I'm going to be Fairfield's official representative, but I'd love to have anyone else who has any connection to Rushville Friends or knows people from there. Uh, Rushville Friends will be celebrating the 100th anniversary of building the brick building, not the original meeting house, but the brick building, uh, on September 30th from 2 to 4. There's going to be a history presentation, and then I know that uh, Jamie Lyon has been working hard on organizing a passing of the bricks, how the bricks got to the place on State Road 26 in Rucheville 100 years ago, and some cake and ice cream. So, um, those of you that enjoyed Max Carter's five-week uh, Quakerism class, He's supposed to be coming from uh, North Carolina to his home meeting. And uh, he's going to have, hopefully for sale, a book that he has written along with uh, his cousin, Sarah Beth Marchenko, the clerk of Western Yearly Meeting, about his Aunt Annis, who was, uh, let's see, formidable missionary. <laughs> in several mission fields in the early 1900s through my childhood. And she wasn't my aunt, 
but she still was formidable. <laughs> and I'm sure that it's going to be, uh, it's based on letters that she sent uh, to family in the years that she spent on Quaker mission fields. So um, again, if you need more details or anything, if anybody's interested, uh, hope it's gonna be a great day. I'm not sure I left um, uh, anybody from Zoom with cares and concerns. I might have messed up on that one a little. Was there any cares and concerns from, from Zoom? I know we had the announcements. Thank you. I think that covers our, our getting the word out on needs and what's going on. Um, I'd like to... Um, now introduce our speaker, and I actually uh, are going to give the prayer for our community, Mark Strelmeyer, for people on Zoom that might not know this gentleman. So, Mark, pretty slick, huh? He communicates with looks. You want me to pray? <laughs> okay. Let us pray. We are grateful for every good and perfect gift you pour into our lives. We are grateful to be part of your beautiful and wonderful world. We are grateful for the lives that intersect ours and bring us to joy, to life, to love. There are folks who struggle with gratitude. The earth shakes, their houses collapse, and many die. The waters come down, the dams burst, and thousands die. There are troubles all over, and we pray for those people. They need the empathy and concern that comes from us and our helping hand. We pray for all who go to school and learn, for those wonderful peacemakers that we call teachers who raise people up. We pray your blessing upon all good enterprises to bring wisdom and understanding into our world. These things we ask because they are heavy on our hearts and because we know you want us to pray. O oh Lord, our God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Is it time to collect the food? I think you're on. Does somebody want to help with a basket? There we go.
ernsthafte Frauen. I'm getting used to this business of ask, being asked to speak where there's no real agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Put somebody in a box with flowers all around him and I know how to do that. Have two people come down holding hands with flowers all around them and I know how to do that too. But to say, you know, you're going to speak about whatever the Spirit leads you to say. I don't know. <laughs> and so I got to thinking that I don't always read the situation correctly. But made, made me think about when I was living in the dorm, first got to the dorm. where it was not encouraged to be cheerful in the morning. Matter of fact, it was forbidden. <laughs> and I would come in with a relapse of folk music, singing, if I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. And the guy standing next to me says, and that's why you don't have a hammer. <laughs> So you try to read it right, you get it right. And today I got to thinking particularly about my grandma, my sweet grandma. I had a sour one too, but I did my sweet grandma. She could make dogs count. I mean, numbers. She could make dogs sing with her. She would step on the back porch of the farmhouse and look at the chicken coop and say, crow for Roosevelt. And the rooster would flap its wings and let go. And that was grandma all over. She could just do that stuff. Comparison between my two grandparents, um, when my folks would go to a church meeting or something, it always was a church meeting, they'd leave me with the Streetlemeyers, my sister and I. And we'd start to pucker up because mom and dad were leaving. Grandma Streetlemeyer says, you cry and I'll get the yardstick. <laughs> well, this is good. <laughs> we're going to have fun, I can tell. Whereas Grandma Steinkamp, the sweet grandma, would say, come with me. I have some new toys. Let's go play. Well, toward the latter part of her life, after my grandpa had died, and she and my uncle were living in the house together, he was paranoid schizophrenic, and he had lived with the three, they guys a threesome, and now it was he and grandma. And then Grandma was noticed to have dementia, the starts of dementia. And then she had a stroke. So Grandma had to go to a care facility, which means for the first time in his life, my uncle was going to be living in the house by himself. My mom and dad were you know, driving in and taking care of things as much as you can without living right there. But still, this was a major change. And then one day my mom was calling my uncle to see how he was and he didn't answer. And they went by the house and they found him and he was gone. I have to understand that my uncle was not a small man. He did not eat the diet plate. He probably weighed 350 pounds. <laughs> so 
so when it came for the calling hours, there he was in this extra built casket, you know, <laughs> they make him bigger for some people. And it was decided that grandma probably couldn't take the funeral, that that was going to be a bit much for her. But they would hire a van for her to come from the nursing facility the day before when it was the calling hours. And they would do that early enough before the crowd arrived. So we're, we're there. We're waiting. We're waiting for, uh, for her to come. And they got her dressed up in a cotton house dress like she wore and, and in a wheelchair and the van pulled up and brought her into the fu uh, funeral home. <clears throat> And I don't know why, I, did, I just decided being the preacher grandson, the only grandson, that I would take charge of wheeling Grandma down front to the casket so she could see Uncle Darrell. And I did. I got her right up next to the casket, and she had macular degeneration too, so she wasn't seeing very well, and I tried to position her and said, Grandma, can you see her? Can you see him? Grandma, can you see him? And while I'm bent over like this, she starts out, Our Father! Grandma couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. Which art in heaven? Hallowed be thy name. She did the whole prayer. Even the Barry Manilow finish at the end. For thine is the kingdom. And when she was all over, she let go of the casket and said, There now. And she scooted back in her wheelchair, and she was ready to go. She had come. She had done her thing. And all of us standing around with our mouths wide open. She left it all on the field. She couldn't, the pastor was standing next to my dad over in the back, and he said, you know, I brought her communion yesterday, and we, took, we prayed the Lord's Prayer, and she couldn't remember it. But at this moment, she did. We bring to the occasion what we have. It's worth making sure we have something for the occasion. And sometimes we don't know. We can't be responsible for everything. I mean, everything's a lot of things. But sometimes we need to leave it all on the field. When it comes time to tell somebody we love them, we need to leave it all on the field. When it comes time to do the kind thing, we need to leave it all on the field. So I remember my grandma. It wasn't too long after I don't know how long it was, but it was not very long. Then she died. Right before Christmas. She was a sweet, sweet lady. And she left it on the field. She left it all on the field.
yesterday yesterday morning I uh, was in Clarksville with a bunch of pigeons let them fly north and then I was following them up and I was going to uh, go to my grandson's football game uh, Greenwood my dear wife will tell you I'm not uh, uh, I get lost easy I don't mind it but I have my phone I forgot to tell you to turn it off but of course I put ways in there and I put Greenwood middle school and then as I was going up the road I every now and then I had to hit the word it wandered me around because there was a blockage on 65 and as I uh, as I got closer to Columbus I had to take a, a turn and and it kept moving off and down at the bottom of your phone is a little thing called recenter and I thought Mark's message why I come here why you come here is to hit that button and we recenter thank you Mark we have a um, song all people on the earth on worship and song number three stand as you're able to the world in peace, we return no one evil for evil. We hold to what is good, we love and give and serve, and we put it all on the field. Greet one another. Thank you.